exponential functions and logs. Okay, so exponential and logs. Okay, looking at our graph. So what do you notice? What do you wonder? Look at the lines of the graph. They all start at what? They all start at 50 or they all touch at 50, right? I'm trying to make her say one specific thing. They all intersect, okay. All right, anything else we wanna see? They're all different colors, all right? What else do you notice? A is the only one that is decreasing. Wow. All right, so today we're gonna to talk about exponential functions. Um, tomorrow we're gonna to little we're gonna talk a little bit more about logs, but exponentials and logs go hand in hand. So what I want you to write down on your paper is this formula. Okay, and A is going to be our initial amount, and B is going to be our rate. So on your paper, in these equations, what is the initial amount? A, which is five. Five is going to be also called our y-intercepts, right? Okay, I'm gonna give you a shortened version of this. For your B, if B is bigger than one, it's gonna be considered growth. If B is less than one, it's gonna be considered decay. So looking at our four equations here, we have two, three, three and a half, and 0.5. So what is two? Is that growth or decay? Okay, what about three? What about three halves? Trick question. Growth. Sometimes people go, hey, three halves is a fraction. That means it's decay. Okay, so you got to make sure that you pay attention to what is it in decimal form. All right, what about 0.5? Okay. Okay. So we're going to actually introduce a new irrational number. Okay, so E is going to be irrational, and it's going to be approximately 2.718. So this is kind of like, you know how they always told you pi was 3.14? Well, E does the same thing. Okay, E is going to be 2.718. E is irrational, okay, which means that it can't be represented as a fraction, and its decimal representation repeats or terminates, never repeats or terminates. So that means you may see a function that's written like this. Okay, so what I would write down is everything that is circled. Take a moment, you're gonna write this down. This is talking about the transformation. So this is very similar to what we've seen in the past. So A is going to be a shrink or a stretch. And H is going to move us left to right, just like last time. And K is going to move up or down. Okay, so take a minute, go ahead and write this down. One thing I do want to point out, you can tell that it's an exponential function when you have an exponent of X. When X is in the exponent, it is an exponential function. When X is in the exponent, that is the cover. Wow. So like, let's say that they give us this graph, okay? And let's say that we have to write the equation for this graph. Okay, so just a reminder, when we first wrote down this equation, I told you that A was what? Okay, before that, before the transformation, it's the initial value. Okay, so initial value is a fancy way of saying y-intercept. So what's the y-intercept on this guy? So, okay, so if we were gonna write the equation, we would say two times, and then we're trying to find our B. Our B is our rate, right? The way we find B is we take our second Y value and we divide it by our first Y value. Okay, so looking at this, we have two as our Y value here, and then we have six as our Y value here. So what's six divided by two? Okay, so we would get three raised to the X. But uh, 
I know. So on this first one, it says two times f of x. So if we were going to write this out, we're saying two times three raised to the x. But what is our y-intercept going to be? Okay, so which one of these crosses the y-axis at two? B. But uh, on my paper, I would draw like a little rough sketch where it just crosses the y-axis at two. You don't have to draw it exactly. Okay. On the next one, we have f of x plus two. So that's saying three to the x plus two. So just like you're saying up two, which means that what would be our y-intercept right now? Our y-intercept would be three, okay? Because we would have one plus two, which would give us three. So y'all are telling me C is my answer. Oh, oh, okay. On the next one, we have X plus two and it's inside the parentheses. So remember when this happens, we're impacting our left, right. So this would be three raised to the X plus two, which means I'm gonna move left two. So which one looks like it moved left two? A, okay. The last one, we have one half times f of x. So this is gonna be one half times three raised to the x. Our initial amount is one half. So which one crosses one half? Okay. Ta -da. If we have something in context, that means that we have restrictions, okay? So for instance, if I'm talking about the domain over here, we're only talking about this window of information. So our domain, what are our x values over here? from zero to three, okay? What about our range? What do they give us? Uh, these aren't the same. They're two different, right? 500, but uh, where? Okay. All right, looking at the next one, looking at this table, what's our X values? And then for our range? Okay, so when we're given in context, we're not gonna have something like infinity. Because like for instance, this is talking about bacteria. You don't have infinitely many bacteria, otherwise they would be taking over the world, right? Okay, take a moment, write that down. So not in context, let's talk about it. If we don't have something in context, we're just given this, our domain for an exponential function is going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity. That means we can plug in any x value into this equation. For range, we're gonna look at our lowest y value, which is zero, to our highest y value, which is infinity. So notice how now we're dealing with infin infinity instead of actual just numbers, okay? Can you try to find the domain and the range for the next one? Your domain, what is that going to be? Negative infinity to positive infinity. For your range, it's going to be negative and two to infinity. What I need you to know, what I need you to know is that this number that's out here is going to be your horizontal asymptote. Horizontal asymptote. Okay. And what I mean by that is notice how this graph comes really, really, really close to negative two, but never actually touches it. Yeah, there's also a horizontal asymptote over here at zero. Notice how there's nothing written out here on that end. So that's gonna have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, okay? Horizontal asymptote. All right, so for end behavior, what's gonna happen is, as x is approaching positive infinity, your y is approaching this negative six, okay? As x is approaching negative infinity, your y's are approaching positive infinity, okay? And the way that you kind of get this is you kind of look at your domain and range. On your domain for this one, it's gonna be negative infinity to positive infinity. For your range, it's gonna be from negative six to positive infinity. Notice how these numbers are the exact same thing with this end behavior. End behavior is just a different way to describe your domain and range, okay? On this next one, 
we don't have a whole lot of information for that table. Like it doesn't go past three or zero. But what we're gonna say is as X is approaching three from the left-hand side, so that's gonna be at minus, okay? Your Y is approaching 625. But as we're moving here from the left-hand side, we're gonna go to what, 625. As X is approaching zero from the right-hand side, notice I'm using a plus sign now, your Y is approaching five. Last two problems. So it's the same table. It's the same table and same graph from the last problem. So looking at this, it says, what is the value of G of negative two? So we will, when we look at this, we're gonna look at G of X and we're gonna say when X is negative two, what's our Y? Negative two. Okay, and it just so happens to be negative two as well. When F of two, so we're gonna look at when F of X, and so when X is two, what's Y? That's it. There's always one of these kind of questions on your final. Don't mess this up. 